We cannot speak for the whole of AI. We are working in human-robot interaction. This is an embodied form of artificial intelligence that is targeted at robots that interact socially with humans. There are many misconceptions about embodied AI, such as social robots. One misconception with respect to robots in the uh, work, uh, workforce is that robots will take over uh, jobs where the work is either dull, dangerous, or dirty, leaving humans to focus on more creative work. The common thought is that if you, you do work that is creative, such as graphic design or art, you're relatively safe from AI-driven job displacement. However, we already have robots capable of performing such roles. Take ADAR, for example, which is a robot that makes drawings, paintings, and sculptures. Also, Hanson Robotics' Sophia has created NFT digital artworks. This is not to say that robots will be creative in the same sense that humans are creative, rather that it is conceivable that robots will adequately fulfill some of these roles in society. Well, I think robots are not just machines. They represent us without being us. Our views on robots has been clouded by a lot of wishful thinking and science fiction, pretty much like the metaverse. Well, there is no consensus on what the most important question in social robotics and HRI related ethics is. If we take ethics in its broader sense to refer to principles discerning between behavior that helps versus behavior that harms, then one important question and long-standing question is how do we ensure that robots are designed in such a way that they support and enhance human social relationships rather than replace them? which, as some have predicted, may lead to undermining the integrity of human relationships and a host of other antisocial behaviors. Robots do not have to be like us to interact with us. Therefore, it isn't necessary to build an electronic human brain or androids. Satisficing is a portmanteau of satisfy and suffice, which was introduced by Herbert Simon. We only have to satisfy, not come up with an internal and absolute solution for ethics in AI. It is not necessary to have a mathematical proof to make it work. In particular, since some of the ethical appraisal is in the eye of the beholder. Ethics in AI is also only one problem of many. To achieve a certain functionality at all requires satisficing. Ethics, then, only is a variation of problem solving. It is not something inherently different. The real challenge is also not in the ethical rules themselves. If a robot would simply obey the law of the land, then the majority of rules are already defined. Although the frequently reference to the reasonable man or woman still introduces some ambiguity. The real problem is in the necessary knowledge about the world. This knowledge is necessary for the robot to function at all. The robot not being able to function well will be the much more annoying aspect of robots compared to the few ethical decisions it will have to do. Many of the robot's functions will be mundane, with a notable exception of autonomous vehicles. Still, the AV has to be able to drive at all before we can consider more challenging ethical situations other than do not crash. This is largely a political question, as it is in essence about what sort of world we are bringing forth in developing social robots for everyday life. Therefore, it should be resolved democratically. More practically, the development of ethical frameworks and standards would ideally be a participatory process uh, involving a diverse group of specialists, such as technologists, scientists, and philosophers as well as the intended uh, community of end users and those who may be directed uh, effectively.
Central to this process, however, is the role of the designer or those who can understand the multiple stakeholders and tame the complexity of these frameworks, shaping them with uh, the appropriate intellectual clarity and effectiveness so that they may be utilized by regular human beings. Well, the standard answer is everybody. But this fails to acknowledge that experts have more and better insights into the challenges and solutions for ethical questions around AI. Still, the general public must be involved in lawmaking similar to any other legal change. The real question is, why is it currently not everybody involved? One challenge is that the topic at hand is inherently difficult and not everybody is even able to make a meaningful contribution. Uh, we have to be grateful for those who at least are able to understand the complexities. The role of universities and other research institutions is to provide research expertise, clarify issues, help identify problems, and for this purpose, however, such institutions must be prepared to work more closely with industry than is perhaps currently the norm. I'm not sure if the proximity in the industry is a good thing. While knowledge transfer is important, universities need to be able to maintain an objective point of view and money from companies tend to corrupt science. The government needs to strengthen the universities to have academic freedom, including the means to finance it who else in society would be able to speak the truth without the fear of losing their job? Humans perceive computers and similar technologies as social actors, as entities with personalities, not merely as objects or things. With respect to, to robots, this social actor perception is amplified as a direct consequence of physical, physical anthropomorphism, <laughs> which we might define as the combination of physical embodiment, movement, autonomy, and the capability of sensing and responding to social cues in the human environment. There are numerous interesting examples of how this impacts people's attitudes towards robots. For example, in the US military, there are stories of soldiers risking their lives to save robots, accounts of emotional distress over destroyed robots, robots receiving purple hearts and funerals with gun salutes. Returning to the theme of job replacement though, research suggests that when robots are anthropomorphized as overly human-like and or highly intelligent or capable, they threaten human safety, resources and jobs, as well as human uniqueness and identity. In such cases, we view these robots as members of a highly competent outgroup and incredibly threatening. Humans have become familiar with all sorts of animals, including other humans, for thousands of years. When we see a robot move and behave at its own accord, we cannot help but consider it to be somewhat alive. Being in the world rather than on a screen strengthens this mental processing. Rationally, we know that it's just a thing that moves, but our rational brain has never been our strong suit. Fundamentally, social robots hold the promise of improving the way humans relate to one another. For example, countless studies demonstrate that robots can improve communication between groups of humans and thus can help them perform better on tasks. Take the Paro Seal robot, which has been shown to inspire conversation in uh, nursing home residents. Equally, social robots have been shown to facilitate greater communication between teachers, parents, and children. On the flip side, we're already witnessing children shouting rude commands at their digital assistants like Alexa or Siri, which has caused some to fear that this behavior will affect the way that children behave toward people. There's also research indicating that some individuals have married their virtual agents, due in part to their lack of social success in human-human relationships. So again, the concern is that interactions such as these will be amplified with the introduction of social robots. And this may negatively change human relationships. Either way, 
It stands to reason that as these machines enter our social environment, they will, in turn, change the way humans act and relate to one another socially. Okay. When sex with robots becomes more enjoyable than sex with humans, then our society will be doomed. Already today, people touch their phones more often than their partners. The problem is that we can program robots to behave in any way we want. No exceptions. I just hope that we will become bored by robots in the same way that we are starting to become bored with social media. It's just not the real thing. <laughs>